not about needing us or needing anything. It's about wanting to, man, before it becomes too late and your needs become a point of no return where you're trying to fix things that are broken forever and create miracles that just cannot happen and do not exist. I have a mate that would benefit greatly by joining HPF. However, he seems stuck on a view that he must do everything alone. That's a very common thing that we see with us as men. How do I help him see that he needs this and to not become a lone wolf? That's a good question. It's an interesting one too. It does affect all of us in some degree. Obviously, we live a large portion of our life alone. That's all of us, right? Like, no matter how amazing your tribe is, there are so many things that you will do in your own company, whether it's the simple things like sharing, preparing food, eating, training, exercising, sometimes with others, sometimes not. You will always, and you will keep company with no one more than the company you will keep with yourself and your head and your heart and your thoughts and feelings. And that's a fact. It doesn't mean you come into the world alone, you go into the world, uh, you leave the world alone. It doesn't mean that you have to do everything on your own. I certainly don't believe in self-made. That doesn't exist. But with blocks like this with a lot of people and men, I get it. We can be proud as men. We have a high level of pride. And a lot of the times we think we can just figure it out. And I get that. Maybe you will one day. But how much time do you think you have? And maybe if we all had 500 years to live as human beings, we'd all figure out the answers and we'd all be wildly successful, right? You and I don't have that luxury. So if you're spending 40 years carving out the shit, going it alone, just trying to figure out things instead of looking at the experiences and the mistakes other people have made in the pathway that is proven and true, You've lost so much time, you've lost so much life. Was it really worth it just to have that badge of honor? Hey, I did all this on my own. You did what on your own? Are you happy? Are you glad you don't have much time left? Are you glad it took you longer than someone else who put their ego and pride aside and chose a level of humility to carve out what they need to with the right people around them? That's the first perspective. That's a hard one to have people. You can't change people. You can't force people to do anything. It's always the person who makes the choice, funnily enough. The greatest way you can influence that is by one, painting that picture and that perspective of time and what is they actually desire. But two, and this is the greatest thing that anyone can do, and we should all do this, coaching or not, selling or not, sales, a product, a program, a service, anything. In life in general, you should always address the current pathway that you're on and where that will lead. Because people are liars. Humans are liars. We lie. We cover things up. And when you don't think you're lying just by covering things up or not addressing it, you are in essence lying by not bringing up truth. It's the same thing. There are two types of lie. There's a blatant lie where I'm going out and I'm just saying, hey, you know, the sky is green. No, it's not. It's blue. No, no, it's green. There's a blatant lie, but then there's also lying to yourself and your future self by not bringing up the truth of your position and the reality that you will face if nothing changes. That's the greatest way to get someone to move. HPF or not, joining us or not, the greatest way to help someone to move is to really sit down and try and do it where they can't escape, they can't run away. It's in a stable setting. You're not here to have conflict with them, but they're in a setting where it is genuine in the sense that you want them to realize their position and you're letting them own that. And the way that that happens is by asking questions. Let's say this man's name was Bob. So Bob, you know, like you, you've addressed that you're stuck and whatnot, but you think you've got to do everything alone. Let's, let, let's future pace this man. Like what, how's everything in family, self and service, right? Like have it with your family, with yourself, with your service and, and identifying uh, not just the pain points, but the discrepancies inside of Bob's life right now versus what Bob actually desires. Cool, Bob. Well, if, if this keeps going, man, like what will happen? I don't know. Well, let's pretend you did know Bob. Like, pe see, people try and dismiss and cover up and turn a blind eye away from the truth. Truth comes for everyone, man. And the truth always wins. Whether it's a truth you like or not, it always wins. Okay, what if you did know Bob? What would that, let's let's push this forward. Okay, I'll, I'd probably get a divorce or this would probably... Okay, no worries. Well, it's, I, I know you've just casually said that, but there's a divorce every 10 minutes in Australia, Bob. It's pretty crazy. Pretty common too, right? Every 10 minutes there's a divorce. Let's have a look at that. If you get divorced, what would that mean with your assets? How much money will that cost you? What about your children, your relationship with your kids? How would that make you feel, man? How do you think you could be the best father you could by only seeing your children um, every fortnight or every month? Well, the average divorced father only sees their children on average 24 minutes a day. They get about 12 hours a month. The married father can see his children the same amount of time in the first three days of the entire month. How would that make you feel, Bob? What would that look like for you? 
Is there a reason why you're holding back? Like, why do you think you need to go it alone, Bob? How would it make you feel if you look back and there is that point of no return and, and X, Y, Z has happened? And what it's really doing is guiding them through, not pinning them down, telling them what will happen. It's just saying, well, think about it. Let's explore it. What will actually happen if nothing changes? How would that make you feel? Is that something you want to happen? Is that something that will keep happening if you don't do something about it? Is that something you think you can turn around on your own? Oh, it is. Well, how come you haven't done that already? How much time do you plan on this? How much time do you think this will ha this will go on? How much time do you think you have before this will no longer keep going and everything will burn down to the ground? How much time do you plan on spending on this or think you have? But maybe your wife is ready to check out in three weeks time, but you think you've got three years. And it's really, it's not widening the gap on purpose. It's just painting clarity over, hey, you are here. This is here. And you cannot get there alone. So I know I've moved into a little bit more of coaching there, but this is for anyone and everyone who feels the same. Even if you're a member of HPF and I, I don't really, it's not about needing us or needing anything. It's about wanting to, man, before it becomes too late and your needs become a point of no return where you're trying to fix things that are broken forever and create miracles that just cannot happen and do not exist. The one thing that we never get back, gentlemen, is time with people. Time with the people we love and want to spend time with at that stage of their journey. We know that children bring that up more than anything else. So if someone is stuck on the view they need to do everything alone, all you need to do is paint that picture. Cool, let's have a look at what your life looks like over the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years if you keep going it alone. Let's look at that lone wolf journey. Let's break that down. And if you break all that down and it's filled with trauma and it's filled with struggle, it's filled with pain, it's filled with heartache and breaking down, and they still accept that, fantastic, man, you must be happy. You must be over the moon with that. that. That must make you feel very happy and fulfilled and you must really enjoy that that's what's about to hit your life and that's exactly what is coming for you and what you're going to face. Because as silly as it sounds, people say they want different things, right? But they don't. They actually want the fucking pain. Otherwise, they do something about it. The turmoil people find themselves in when they speak the words, the wizardry of the tongue, saying they want something else is bullshit because if you really wanted what you said, which doesn't align with what's happening inside of your life, you'd fucking do something about it, but they don't. So that's the craziest part with this sort of stuff. People actually want that. They just try and convince you otherwise through their words that they don't. And that's quite sad because even though someone may say they want pain and heartache and turmoil in their life, it's not a great energy to connect to for any human. I hope that helps.